You're listening to the Nerd to Know Media Network. Join us at nerdtoknowmedia.com. Broadcasting from the Blanchestan Center, this is Phoenix FM. The internet is a communications tool used the world over where people can come together to pitch bad movies. According to the Nerd Index, you should be upside down in a junior high toilet around the clock. Yes, yes. Oh, we'll do it live! in, Todd goes out. Never miss communication. It's over 9,000! My name is Foxy. The balls are in there. Hello and welcome to this week's edition of the Nerd to Know Basis Show, airing on Phoenix 92.5 FM and all those wonderful places on the internet. I am Keen, and with me this week is Kev. How are you doing? I'm doing well. Uh, it's it's been a, it's been a busy couple of weeks. Kev's Kev's very sleepy. Is Kev's, Kev now? Kev's, Kev's Kev's been going out late at night too many times. <laughs> ah, well, look at you with your childless life. Now, may I propose a bold experiment this week? I don't know. I don't know, Keen. I think that it sounds like there's notions about you. I was talking to some friends of mine who listened to the show and they have noticed it tends to meander just a touch. <laughs> a touch? So, I don't know, I don't know I what you mean. that we say a topic and talk about the topic and stick to the topic just to see what happens. I don't know, Kian. I think it's, it's, it's radical ideas like that that I think are going to get you kicked out of this industry. <laughs> oh, well, look, you know, <laughs> they thought I was mad when I invented the microphone, but here we are. <laughs> but to be honest, just to even break my own rule, I it's kind of a slow week for like big major news after months of like strikes and you know drama and Barbenheimer and all. We do have things have planned out, but I was kind of scratching my head a bit to think about kind of major news topics to lead with and all. You know. I think a lot of people, I think people are just waiting for, ju- like, this is, we're recording a couple of days before this obviously launches. We are recording on the final day of the most eternal January. It's felt long, hasn't it? It's felt absolutely arduous. So I think people are like, no, we'll just announce something in February. And February is three months away. <laughs> uh, I think, yeah, I because think, we like, did, because... I, I I think the last episode that just you and I recorded was we were covering the upcoming movie releases and most of them don't have an image. A lot of them don't have a title. It's just next year's just this big blank canvas of maybe. Although I have found absolutely like top three movies I am so excited about. Oh, the yeah. trailer came out for called Monkey Man. It is directed and starring Dev Patel. And it looks, the trailer is just painting it as Indian John Wick. And I am so in. Dev Patel. God, what a wonderfully weird actor. Like, yeah. The Green Knight is quickly becoming one of my favorite, like, go back to films. He's just like, he's one of those actors where you don't think about him a lot. But like, he's got that Midas touch where the things he's in generally turn great, you know? Yeah, yeah, no, he's he's he, every like he doesn't crop up often, but when he does, it's always something different and interesting. Yeah, and he's just like ev- it's every time I think about him, I end up thinking about it like, damn, that original cast of skins have just truly blown up Hollywood. <laughs> yes, like between him and Daniel Kaluuya and Nicholas Holt. Um, Daniel Kaluuya from Skins. Daniel Kaluuya was originally Skins. Yeah, no, I didn't but- know that. Look back, like, genuinely, look back at that original Skins cast, and you will recognize 
every single one of them having been in like a a blockbuster movie in the past five years. Okay, all right. Well, I apologize for tangenting our non-tangent show, <laughs> but we're going to do our best to cover a few things. I believe that... there's the Suicide Squad game. I'm not going to make a promise that I'm going to break. Uh, I believe you've seen the Percy Jackson series. There's some Madam Web drama. But I'm going to start with something local and talk about uh, this month's Megacon, uh, which I don't think you ever attended, have you, Kev? No, I don't think I'd heard about it until you actually dro- you you mentioned you were going. Well, Megacon's a bit of an odd beast because it's not like Dublin Comic Con, which seems to be its own kind of, it's part of a franchise, but it's a, it's its own kind of franchise in itself, its own brand. Megacon's a weird one where it's more of like a brand in that it rolls out week by week, seemingly all year round, going across Ireland and the UK. Like there was one the week before it that had different people at it. And sometimes people like voice actors tour with it and all that kind of stuff. It'd be more similar to the way something comes to like, you know, the point or whatever it's called now, three arena, and then moves okay. on and does the same thing again. Bit of a strange one, but uh, I won't go into too much detail because we did an episode of it last year, but it was the most family friendly con I would say I've been to. It's lovely. They've got great guests. There was a lot of Pokemon people this year. Um, no cues for it, which is nice, you know, nice. compared to all the other ones. Uh, it's great. You come in. There were free donuts being handed out by like Disney promoting the Simpsons Always if good. they need promotion. Yeah. Uh, this was, and just to put this in context, this was probably about two weeks ago at the time of recording and in the RDS, in their kind of side building. And it was really nice because walking up to it now, it was like the windiest day of the year. But apart from that, um, it was really nice because you saw a lot of people who like, you know, it was a mix of those like diehard people dressed like obscure anime characters you've never heard of in with like families who were just going for the crack. And you don't usually get that mix. It's a lovely feeling. And you arrive and there's food there. And there's like a TARDIS console you can play on for free. That's got my vote immediately. Uh, There's a whole area of like bouncy castles and slides for kids, a massive artist uh, gallery, like some nice merchandise, a gaming area and stuff. It's all on one floor. And the costume competition uh, was like, it was like really different from the DCC where you could tell they were just trying to rush people on and off the stage quick as they could. They organized the costume competition three months in advance and actually gave each participant two minutes to do a performance piece. And that was lovely. Like, yeah, really just just time and space. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, you know, now I get look, no, no, no knocks against uh, Dublin Comic Con. It's its own beast. It's much bigger. But like it was it was kind of just the right amount of intimate, if you know what I mean. It didn't feel like you had to travel very far. There were no queues. It was lovely to just wander about and soak in the atmosphere. There was a Lego tent where you could build stuff. If you were hungry, apart from the free stuff at the start, they're like Eddie Rockets and like a few other franchises had those little like van trucks mm. in the building with you. Like we were in and out in, I would say, three and a half, four hours having done everything. And that's a lovely, lovely change of pace. It was great to just go and feel chilled out the whole time. None of the kind of cramped, bustled, oh God, we've got to stick to the schedule, all that jazz. Like, you know, it was just a really nice family-friendly experience. I don't know if anyone listening out there has young kids and maybe hasn't tried the con and it is done based, but when Megacon comes back, uh, probably January to Dublin next year, or if you're listening in the UK, it does go around the UK a fair bit. I would highly recommend it. And uh, I'm friends with uh, one of the professional cosplayers, and she said that it was one of the best experiences she's ever had too. So there's an industry inside take on it. I thought it was great. Okay. That's, yeah, like I think they're, you know, we you know, we talked about Dublin Comic Con, but it is like scale is something that it just kind of blows out of portion. So it's good to hear that like, you know, there is still a, there is still something to be said about like, that small of a scale where it doesn't have to be a whole weekend. You don't have to be throngs and crowds of people. You just go enjoy yourself. And so long as the, you know, the attractions are there and it's, it's well-maintained, 
uh, yeah, no, that sounds like an absolute blast. It, it sounds like something I'd actually be interested in. Oh, I'd highly recommend it. I mean, don't get me wrong. There's a place for like the, like, you know me, going as mm. Bowser last August to Dublin Comic Con. There's a place for the big, mad, intense, like, con. But like, it's really nice to just have a low stakes one where it's just kind of ambient and relaxed and all that kind of stuff. It's just as a lovely kind of, palate cleanser and if you're kind of put off by the massive cues and the sort of intense aura around it this is a lovely kind of dip in your toe in the water type one if you know what i mean yeah yeah and just i'm assuming then you know the price point for it is kind of reflective of that i'm assuming it's oh, not terribly kids up to the age of 10 went in free and myself and stevie's tickets came to less than 30 quid it's now granted yeah. only about one day but that's dirt cheap I'd say yeah, like that's, somewhere that's, in the area of like 120 for all of us to go for the Dublin one, you know? Yeah, like that's, yeah. Like it said, like, you know, you, you had a lovely con experience for what would be less than the price of like going to the cinema. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. And like you said, like I said, food there, no queues for guests. I got to chat to John Noble for 10 minutes and one of the Torchwood actors because there's no queues. They're probably just waiting for someone else to turn up. Like, you know. <laughs> They're just wandering just around the hall. It's a mood, like holding out for like any anyone just to come up and talk. Just biting that the talk to talk to anyone. <laughs> anyway, I had that. I, I I don't know if it was. I can't remember how long ago it was pre COVID. I know my brother ended up going to Dublin Comic Con, so it would have been yeah. busy. But wildly, I don't know if it was just the time he picked or what. But John Romero was there. Okay, like John. John Romero created Doom John Doom John Romero. Wow. And by all accounts, he was just sitting at a table and Dave just wandered up to him and spent solidly just a half an hour talking to him. <laughs> I don't know I don't know if Dave just like accidentally skipped a queue for a photo shoot or John Romero was just sta- sitting at a stand somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Just, well, well that, that's weird. entirely possible because they don't put the like comic artists in with like the ones from TV and all that. So, like, yeah. I mean, I had it happen to me at the one two weeks ago. I was chatting to Veronica Taylor for a minute before I knew who she was, you know? <laughs> it's like, wait, oh, Veronica God. Taylor, like, like Ash Ketchum, like. Ash Ketchum, yeah, 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 I thought I recognized the name. It's like, oh, God, how mortified. I don't know what she looks like. She's a voice actor. I, why would you? Yeah, that's. I know, but it's not, not like a, it's not like a great first impression, is it? <laughs> I'd say she's probably happy that people are recognizing. Seems like a good sport, know. but like you know. Yeah. Uh, uh, no, no, I can fully believe that. Uh, oh. Well, I know what you mean, though. Like, cause, uh, like, I love going to like meet the famous people and all that. But the entire time I'm talking to someone, like the likes of Gareth David Lloyd and Torchwood or John Noble or whoever. I have this thundering thing in my ear, no matter how friendly they are, of don't say something stupid. Don't say, don't (laughs) ruin their day. Don't be that person they talk about on stage later on because you said it's stupid. Like, I, oh my God. Like, it's, but it's still like a real, like, shot in the arm. Like, I still remember Charles Martinet, like, you know, at Dublin Comic Con, the Mario actor, like, you know, commenting unprompted on stage about how good my daughter's like Sonic costume was like <laughs> that kind of stuff is lovely. You know, when you get those like once in a while experiences that really kind of secondhand heighten something you already liked, you know? Yeah. Yeah. No, I no that's, that's, that's same good. I'm going to assume the creator of doom was very friendly. I, yeah. John Romero was, I think John Romero, you know, he was, he was a rock star back in the 1980s. This is, truly like 35 years after the fact i think he is he is humbled by now <laughs> um no because it's actually you're not reminding me as well that i think they like you know we've been getting a drip feed of of announcements for the the upcoming uh dublin comic-con guests and i think you know i, I think we've kind of like we we've criticized comic-con for you know catering to like kind of a mass appeal crowd without kind of like uh, uh specifying anything current yeah, uh, you know, like like the last one, uh, regard like the strike aside, aiming for the Terminator cast, which yeah. is not a current fad. Uh, they seem to be kind of doubling down in the other direction this time, because 
a couple of weeks ago they announced two of the voice actors from Baldur's Gate three. Yeah. Uh, the name oh, see one today. Three. That's what I was just about to get yes. to. Yeah, it's uh, they've they've gotten. Uh, I don't. I cannot find that. I'm trying to Google. What are the actors from a live the action One Piece? Uh, the the actress for Nami. Yeah. Uh, in the live action One Piece, which that's yeah, like I like it's it's. You know, I I was on the fence. It's it's a bit of a distance for me. I don't. Why I, I wouldn't want to go unless I'm actually like I know something there. Mm. But it's it's it, it, it's pushing the scales on me actually pro- considering going. If we right. don't, uh, I mean, look, if we don't end up. Mark Shepard's going to be there, and I will queue for ten years to meet Mark Shepard. Are you aware of who he is? Oh, Crowley. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But yeah, he's yeah. In, he's one of those actors who's been in like everything. Like, you know, he's been in Star Trek, he's been in Balsar Galactica, he's been in Doctor Who, and his dad was doing the same thing in the 60s and 70s, being in, like, then Star Trek, then, like, Balsar Galactica, all that kind of stuff. And he's one of the only Americans I know who can do a halfway decent Irish accent. So that in and of itself is worth celebrating. Speaking of act, and, and speaking of actors that are kind of just in everything, mm. we've also got Joe DiMaggio. <laughs> Oh yeah. I yeah. I oh Adventure Time fans must be like on Cloud Nine because your man who voiced Finn was at MegaCon last week. And oh, now yeah. the dog is gonna be there. I imagine the Benders queue fans will be there like a mile and a half long queue, like Yeah, no. Like I yeah, I I'd say I'd say yeah, the spring comic this spring comic is probably gonna be a, a popping one. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, but no, sorry. I, uh, so that's my kind of take on MegCon. And we'll do more kind of stuff as we uh, approach the Dublin Comic Con. And I've got a Doctor Who one I'm going to in April as well. But uh, we'll talk about, because I have not heard a single thing about this. There's a Suicide Squad game, I believe. Yeah. So actually, I, want, I do want to kind of backstep this a bit because you, 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 you know nothing. Okay. I think I saw a poster on a bus, but I've not okay. seen any trailers or anything like. Okay, I want to actually go back a few years. I'm assuming you're at least familiar with the Batman Arkham series of games. Yes, Arkham I've Asylum, got all Arkham of them City. on PlayStation Three. Yeah, yeah, right. So they were they were made by the studio called Rockstar, and you know, for for those of you that might that are listening that might not know, all three of them critically acclaimed. Like, were the biggest games, and that like were were incredibly influential on like third person action games. Yeah, and recently ported up the until Switch now. as well. It's worth saying. Yeah, recently ported out. Um, so like hugely. Oh, before, before we actually get into that, sorry to side me. Did you ever play the Batman Begins game? No. You should because it's. I'm not sure if they did it on purpose, but. It is a prototype Arkham Asylum game, complete with the fear mechanics. But, oh, uh, but wild. the minuses are it's jankier. The plus are you get the entire cast, voice cast of Batman Begins. And I mean everyone. Christian Bale, actually, Liam I Neeson, think, Killian Murphy, seen, Michael like it, Caine, Morgan Freeman, seen. Gary Oldman. They're all there. I think maybe they didn't get your one who plays Rachel. But I think she might be. Oh, and your man who plays Carmine Falcone, who sadly passed away recently. Oh, I really like the actor. It's going to bother me. I can't think of his name off the top of my head. But like, just it's like the last big budget, like movie based on a game thing, which they realized was not taking off after ten years of flogging it. Yeah, no, like they they could only get away with like shovelware tie-ins for so yeah. long before they need to actually start putting a budget to it. Yeah, but if it ever uh, pops up on Steam or something, give it a try because it is like, it's not as good as those games, but it is fascinating in that it's like the same mechanics, but like, not quite, the technology isn't quite there yet. But anyway, sorry, you were talking about the Arkham games. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's, yeah, well, well, that obviously fell under the radar because, like, it was under the same time the... Sorry, the he's gone. Um, because the right obviously was around the same time as the Nolan games, and mm. uh, the Arkham trilogy just took off. Yeah, uh, and as I said, hugely influential. Put like Rocksteady's name like on the map of this is a development studio that can make quality games. Yeah, 
a little bit, I think it was before Arkham City, either Arkham City or Arkham Knight, uh, they get acquired by Warner Brothers and like their games division. Um, and it's also worth remembering, like, you know, those games came out, I think Arkham Asylum took maybe a year, a little over to develop. Hmm. City only took two years, and considering the scale of that game, that's incredible. Yeah. Um, and then and then Arkham Knight, I think, took four, but they kind of rejigged a lot of the mechanics for that. Uh, so yeah, like it's like a like a total of about seven years of like development for all three of those games, and all three of them are so critically lauded. Mm. Rocksteady announced that they were moving on to another project after that. That project has been Suicide Squad: Kill the Justice League. Okay, that was premise. Arkham Knight came out seven years ago. That's how long this game has been in the mix. Um, and and again, you know, on, on the like from from the reception of Arkham Knight, everybody was like, okay, you know what, a Suicide Squad game, like you know, the idea of the Justice League going evil's gotten a bit passe with you know the likes of uh, well, that's what I was gonna say. Like, I played Injustice too, and like Injustice, I feel like yeah. there's more like edgy mirror universe counter versions of DC than actual yeah. genuine. Superman trying to stop get a cat out of a tree content at this point. Yeah. Oh no, there fully is. And so, like you know, that that concept was a little bit passe, but they were like, you know what? It's rock steady. I'm sure they can do something with it. And so, last year, they put out a 15 minute like gameplay demo, right? Like showing just raw gameplay, and it was bad. Really? It, like. They announced they announced pretty early on that the game is going to be mostly multiplayer focused. I think it's a I think it's a four person team based multiplayer game. Right. Where like you play as like somebody plays as Harley Quinn, somebody plays as uh, King Shark, somebody plays as Mr. Bam. Assuming Mr. it's Boomerang. like Arkham walking around kind of environment type game, is it? Uh, no, it is a four person team shooter. A four it person is... team shooter. Yeah, it is. If you what's she gonna shoot with her baseball bat? Yeah, nope, that's she has a gun now. Okay. Mr. Boomerang doesn't have a boomerang, he has a gun now. Right. Uh like it's it it looks genuine it looked genuinely like destiny with a suicide squad skin. And like that's it's all these like point and loot based mechanics, and it just looked like we're so far past like so many of these types of games, like Anthem and the Avengers game, and uh, the even live Destiny, which has been thing, wildly yeah. like thing, the live service, but like the live, like the live service shooter model, yeah. like has been shown to just fail every minute. I mean, even the Avengers game that Dara likes, that was not necessarily a shooter, still didn't really take off. Like, and that's more creative well, that's, than those in the mechanics. Yeah, but that's he like he likes that because they made that free because they were getting nothing from it. This is useful context. Uh, I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah. Um, so this, they released that gameplay demo. About, like Again, 15 minutes of this. And it just mm. looked bad. Um, and the game was supposed to come out like a month after the fact. Mm. So the critical reception came out hard against it. And the team decided... Still on the demo up. now or on the finished game? On the on the, on the finished game. They had right, not released right. any codes for the game at this point. Right. Um. So the, the the team come back and we're like, okay, no, we've heard your reception. We're going to delay the game by a whole year. Okay. You know, we've heard we've heard your feedback. We're going to put we're going to put it back in the oven. We're going to come back in a year and do it. Now, again, on a game like a triple A game at this scale, one year is not a lot of time. No, especially especially when you have to fix fundamental issues like the like the the mechanics of the game. Um, <laughs> It's not like a Sonic the Hedgehog thing where you can just no. like take one thing out and replace it. Like, so where we're at now, the game is coming out start of February. If if it's not out by the time this episode releases, it'll be out like within the week after. Expect uh, the... a text in about half an hour after we record this show to say it's the new like Baldur's Gate three or something like. Oh that. no! 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 Thing. Oh no! Because. There was a press event about a month ago from now okay. where 
like news out like games news outlets like IGN and that got hands on with the game, every one of them were appallingly bad. Really? And it's, yeah. And this even like especially IGN who I don't know if you read their articles, they will praise most anything, even if it's garbage. <laughs> especially if it comes from like a major studio because okay. they're probably funded. Um, yeah, outlets pan the, the hands-on demo they're given. Okay. So we're coming up on release date. Most major outlets are not given pre-review codes. So Is that any a reviews of, the- of itself? Yeah, because that means like reviewers have to wait until the game's launch to get the game. Right. And reviews cast like it'll be a, at least a month or two before reviews of the game come out. Okay. Um and and it shows this idea of only giving review copies to people who are praising the early product, meaning that the only reviews are going to be generally positive. Um, okay. So this so thing, So is this now here's my question though. Is like the notoriety of this game widespread or just kind of among people in the know like hold on because there's still more oh my so, god so there was a pre-order bonus that was early access to the game okay these and again this is they, they like they did not make they did not fundamentally change this game it is still an online multiplayer game right the early access servers had to be shut down because of a glitch that most people are turning on the game in their early access model, the game would be marked as completed. What? Yeah, a bug auto completed the game for them. So does that mean you can't play it, or you just have everything online? Well, no, they or... had to. Sh- well, no, they've had to shut the servers down, so okay. you can't play it. Even though these are people that paid to play the game early. Okay, but what I want to know is that. You sign in and it says your game is complete. What's physically there? I I, I don't know the specifics, okay. but the outcome is that people who paid to get play this game early can't because the servers are offline. Which I'm not in the know. I'm assuming that's a bad sign. It means that like that that's there's no there's no int- there's no connection. Like there's it's a multiplayer game that has no multiplayer. When you put it like that, that's not ideal. No, it's not. So yeah, so we're we're yeah, as I said, we're we're very shortly on like actual release mm. and just everything is going against it. Um and like yeah, no, as I said, I think uh, to uh, what were you asking about the notoriety of the game? Um it is like it, it if you're if you are familiar enough with the Batman games, again, as I said, Rocksteady was a name mm. that was like a mark of quality because those three Batman games yeah. were certifiable like high quality mm. uh, and so then to have to, to wait seven years for their next game for it to just fall at every hurdle uh, has just kind of been a train wreck in real time uh, now it's I think it is it is worth noting that a lot of the key development staff from Rocksteady jump ship about halfway through this seven year period uh, I think the two from the two what to what? or just uh, no, they they left and founded their own new studio. Oh, really? Yeah, I think it was the two. I don't know any names, but the two head, like the two guys who founded Rocksteady as we knew it when the to develop the Batman games originally, and then I think they've been hiring just the like occasional people that were part of the Batman development teams. Okay. Um. Oh, over the course of the past couple of years. Uh, I believe their new studios, a uh, hundred stars or something like that. I, I, they like they've and they're only a brand new studio. I do not know if they've started development on any games. So uh, what you're telling me is you're looking forward to playing this game? Absolutely not. I've got so much. Kian, let me tell you how February's state shaping up. Right. The Persona Three remake comes out in like three days, and the Final Fantasy VII sequel comes out in like three weeks. I don't oh yes, I did see a load of the Persona games are on the Switch shop now. Yeah, I'm yeah, they released that. three, four, and five, um, which are I I haven't played three, but I have it on good authority. Four and five are exceptional. I'm, I'm going to go to those after the finish the Final Fantasies and the Ace Attorneys. Uh, 
So but, like in ten years. Yeah. But like to get back to the Suicide Squad for a second, like I'm I'm relatively familiar with the original Suicide Squad comic. And the whole conceit of it was like, you know, you've got these characters, every issue, one of them will die. Like, you know, it's a good hook. So if you were to make a Suicide Squad game, what I don't get is why don't you make it like not like a shooter thing, but like you're the Amanda Waller and you have to put together a team of five or six people. And did you ever play the game FTL faster than night? No, I'm familiar with those. So you're kind of you're you're thinking about framing it more of kind of a strategy game. Well, not necessarily strategy. But, like, instead of what I'm assuming the game is, where it's, like, you know, it's a story of Harley Quinn and Killer Shark and, you know, all these characters who have plot armor, why not scale it down and do, like, a sort of a escapist or FDL type thing where you play it, the plot might be slightly different every time, your characters might not be the same every time, maybe you could invent your own characters, maybe you could pull really obscure DC characters like, you know, Ketchup Man or Kite Man or whatever. And you do your playthrough and maybe not all of them live. And then you get like slightly different endings depending on who makes it through. And then it's a clean slate every single time because that's the spirit of the original comic. Hardy Quinn, as great as Hardy Quinn is, she kind of muddies the waters of what Suicide Squad is supposed to be. Suicide Squad is supposed to be these junk characters you've never heard of who they are throwing to the wolves and hopefully some of them will come back. They're yeah, not kid, the kid, anti-Avengers kid. or anti-Justice we, League. Their whole thing are, is that you do, you're you not supposed to know who they are. The second Suicide Squad yeah. gets that and that's what the whole intro is about, really. Yeah, now we're definitely going to have to cut and edit all this because that's a billion dollar idea that we cannot I, I, we cannot put on the air. <laughs> all right, well look, cut that no, bit, uh, send it to Warner Brothers. Like you could do it low res. I mean, Undertale caught on. That only cost five thousand dollars to make. Oh, you could. Oh no, you could do exactly what you're talking about for a fiftieth of whatever the budget for Suicide Squad would be. Like, like um, just do it. I mean, like what? Yeah. Like in the grand scheme of things. Even if it doesn't make a million dollars, it won't cost much, and it'll be charming, you know. No, that's that's a that's a wonderful idea. My I I my 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 kind of like little plug in this is obviously don't play this game. It looks like trash. Yeah, I can't imagine it being good. I want to shine a second spotlight on another band of misfits comic game. Sure. In the Guardians of the Galaxy game that came out about three or four years ago, um, it kind oh. of overshot. It it came out roughly the same time I remember as seeing Asus Friend time the Avengers game that it was roughly the same time yeah. as the Avengers game Eidos were really trying to push they got the Marvel license and we're going to make a big go at it yeah. and Avengers was like the, the, the flagship of like the live service thing but then just under the radar is this one single player Guardians of the Galaxy game mm. that it like I think even though it was billed as like kind of a like triple A 60, mm. 60 quid game it had exactly the vibe of like a mid-level, like, 40-quid PS2 game. And mm. I love it. It's just a... It is a 12-hour, just, single-player narrative where you play as Peter Quill just going on a Guardian's adventure. And, like... Okay, it's, what, are, what are the mechanics like? Uh, so you're just... It, it is a third-person shooter. Uh, right. But, like, you play as Peter Quill. Uh, and then you get, like... So you don't play as all of the Guardians, but all, all of them have, like, assists to you. Hmm. So like you can press a button and have Dra- and have uh, Drax go and start smashing things. Um, you can have you can press a button and have like Gamora just go and start like kick flipping people, things like that. You know, it's it's fairly simplistic in that sense, but it it, it is a it is a narrative focused first person like uh, single player story, and it's just this really charming little uh, Guardians game mm. that's like. Not quite, like, out of the canon of, like, the MCU, out of the canon of the comics. It's just, like, in this one, there's, like, no sense of relationship between Peter Quill and Gamora. Peter has his own family, like, relationship issues throughout the game. 
uh, Drax is mythologized in this to have already killed Thanos, but <laughs> nobody knows if that's actually true or not. Right. And that's and I think they just picked up Gamora at this point. So like it's it takes just like little things like that. And there's just big and small Easter eggs from like kind of just like you know very lightly known um uh, uh, uh like mar like bits from like sparsely known Marvel comics uh, lore. Like one of the boss fights is Fing Fang Foom. You know? <laughs> It's it is charming. I cannot imagine like if it isn't on sale now, it will be in like a month. Yeah. I wouldn't say spend sixty quid on it, but it is more than worth forty quid. <laughs> well, if it pops up on the switch, I'll get it. And conversely, I want to kind of I think you only get it on Steam now, if at all. But it reminds me of the very charming Guardians of the Galaxy uh Telltale game. Do you remember the Telltale games? Yeah, the kind of the, the yeah, they were kind of cho- uh, Burton, like choice based kind of narrative. Yeah, games. because there was a Walking Dead series, there was a Batman series, both. Yeah. Really they only, I think they must have lost the license before they could go any further. There's one series of Guardians of the Galaxy, and it's really, really charming. It's similar to what you were saying. It's uh, basically, it's more based on the comics than the films, although there is kind of a little bit of overlap. But basically, in the start of the story, you kill Thanos much easier than you'd expect. And the fame goes to the Guardian's heads. <laughs> and basically, your choices dictate whether the gang stays together by the end or not. And that's the what? narrative thrust of it. Like, depending on, like, not to break down all the mechanics, but depending on how you play it, Quill either has the typical romance with Gamora or just becomes really close friends with Rocket and super wholesome. Uh, uh, yeah. And like you've got the likes of Nebula and like all these kind of things. And having played it through two or three times, it's like there's a lot of depth for what is essentially a five hour game. And it's really, really charming. Like, you know, so if anyone like plays that first Guardians game you recommended and wants a bit more, I'd say that's fairly cheap by now because Telltale doesn't really exist anymore. Telltale's a wild one because, like, they went bankrupt and out of business like three years ago. Mm. They're back from the dead now. Are they still and making make, stuff? They're like, I, I, they're, yeah, they're making Wolf Among Us too. They're making what? Do you know the Wolf Among Us? No. Oh, it was it was one of their big ones, uh, like that in The Walking Dead. Where it's it's based on a comic series called Fables, okay. Um, where it's basically it it's like a, a it's it's a collection of like fairy tale characters living together, and it's almost like kind of a, a pseudo noir. Um, and it follows Bigby, who is the big bad wolf, who's like a grizzled twenties <laughs> detective. Uh, Snow White is his girlfriend, and he's trying to uncover a murder. Um, it's really charming. It it's really interesting. Wonderful. Yeah, like it's it is it is yeah it's a lot of fun. I, like if you like, if you like Telltale games, it's probably one you should check out. It's a sh- uh, I'm glad to hear that because it was a real shame. We will get kind of back to the headlines, but like it was a real shame with the Telltale games because like I played the first two series of the Batman one, and the appeal of the games is kind of based on the idea that your stories will continue. You know, mm. like so if every story ends on cliffhanger and the story just stops. Not only are you not getting more, it sort of desensit de incentivizes you, Jesus, to <laughs> go back and play again, you know, because there are multiple endings, but essentially they are just multiple cliffhangers as well. Like Yeah, I think the problem was I like you know, speculate, but I think the problem was that they just went too hard on too many things. Like they were releasing dozens of them at a time. Oh, completely. Like to to get back to the Batman one. This, because by series two of the Batman one, like the last chapter had so many potential endings that like the script for all the collective, not even the whole chapter two, just for all the alternate endings was like longer than the Dark Knight Rises. Jesus Christ. Because by then you've got 10 chapters of branching paths, which is like 16, 20 different things that all need to be recorded with voice actors and animated and all that, you know? 
Yeah, no. I know. I, I'm just. I'm talking the volume of games. Like, oh, I know. But imagine every game yeah. has that problem. Yeah. After yeah, a certain no, point. Just yeah, no. It, it, like, I I hope that you know. Again, I don't know how that company is still standing. Uh, but I hope they learn from that mistake and just focus down a little bit more. But speaking of unwieldy things that probably shouldn't still be surviving, I believe you've got Madam Web news. Uh, I not a lot. I was actually looking to see if I could find some of the the things because mm. I the impression I was getting reading Twitter headlines, which always a good I'll, idea. I'll admit, not the most re- um, not the most reputable source. <laughs> that's I think the premiere is actually tonight in London. Oh. Um but the like I, I the impression I was getting from Twitter was that Dakota Johnson is just like checked it. This isn't news. This is just me speculating. This is a vibe check. This is a vibe check. It's that like Dakota Johnson is like just a uh, 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 Robert Pattinson le- levels are just checked out from this movie in the press tour. I'm assuming you mean Robert Pattinson as in Twilight, not like Yeah. Oh stuff. yeah. Well, I mean he's got a he, he's got an interesting vibe in films he liked being in, you know. So Dakota Johnson's like the, the Fifty Shades actor, is he? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he's definitely been in more. But yeah, everyone knows Fifty Shades. Um yeah, she's she's like, like the lead in it, but yeah, like the she's been doing, you know press junkets and I think she hosted SNL and just the impression you get like everyone's getting it's just like damn she is she has already cashed her check for this movie and just doesn't care anymore well I mean be fair to the poor Sony actors they make a movie and like they have to spend essentially two years promoting it while the movie keeps not coming out I think I did hear again this this that's that's not me like quoting I'm just imagining yeah, poor, poor Quicksilver, oh, yeah. Aaron Taylor Johnson, probably is still <laughs> answering questions about Craven, which won't come out I, until the sun goes out. No, that's that's if people are still asking him questions about Craven. Oh, I would ask a lot of questions <laughs> about Craven. Are you joking me? <laughs> um, but yeah, no, like it's 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 an odd one. Um, I I think I will. I did see a story. I think it was a Variety post. Where it was mentioned, where I th- I think some of the cast of Madam Web, when they signed on, were ge- had genuinely thought this was an MCU movie. I can believe that, and apparently were very disappointed to find out that it was one of the stony parts. Um, but, but how far it, in do you think they got before uh, someone told them? That's what I want to know. Was yeah, like was was it the first day of shoots or were they in there for a while? Was it the last know. day of uh, shooting? Uh, brutal uh did someone buy a house expecting that thunderbolt money (laughs) uh oh i did see actually uh ao edabiri has apparently left thunderbolt Uh, who's that oh she is she is one of my new favorite actresses she was in the bear and she was in bottoms recently Oh yes, uh, her. Okay, so she's not an established like Marvel character then. No, no, I could not tell you who she was supposed to play okay. in, in Thunderbolts. Uh, and they've already I, they've already got an actress lined up as a replacement. I cu- again, couldn't tell you the name. I don't have it in front of me. Uh, no. But it this happened very shortly after uh, Ed Abiri won an Emmy for best for best T- actress on TV, and I suspect that her rates went up. Ah. Uh. Um, oh, that was another part of the, the Dakota Johnson one was that on top of like just a just a general vibe of just kind of being checked on the press junkets, he has since switched talent management agency. Wait, you switched what? Sorry, a uh, talent management agency. In response to something, uh, unclear, but just you know the timing indicates maybe maybe she wants more than Madam Web. Oh, we became like what's that American thing? TMZ so quickly. We're like, hey, TV I don't care. I don't care Jose about or something. actual. Hey, I don't. I don't care about people's actual lives. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not going to report on somebody's death the moment they die. Oh my god. Okay. That's uh, I was, yeah, I got... into, It's my fault. But we've wandered into very speculative territory this week. Yeah. 
just, no, you're, you're just reminding me. I was watching watching a video that recapped the. Uh, did you ever read the Jeanette McCurdy book? No. She said uh, Sam Puckett from iCarly. Uh, right. The actress um, had a bad time recording that show. The book is called "I'm Glad My Mom Died." Oh, I did hear the title. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's it's a brilliant book. It is absolutely brutal. Like it's it's all about child abuse and traumas. Like it's it's a rough read, but it's exceptional. Um, and she she got texts announcing her mother. Uh, she got texts. She got texts from for condolences from her mother's death while she was standing over her mother who had just stopped breathing. Okay, that because is weird. somebody heard about it from TMZ. That Ooh. is bizarre. I I'm really glad I'm not famous. I couldn't I couldn't live to that to that standard of no. like surveillance and all that, you know? No, no, it's brutal. I, like it it, content aside, obviously, you know, take take every content warning mm. you can in, in in respect to it. It's a I'm glad my mom died. This is an exceptional book, and mm. I, I I thoroughly I really recommend the audiobook because it's read by Jeanette herself. <laughs> oh, that would be a very uncomfortable thing. I mean, she's a very funny actor, but like, you know, it's, she does it. She does it so straight. Everything's like with a. Like just the most horrific stuff, mm. but just in a pure monotone. It's great. Like it, it's 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 great acting in a mm. read of her own yes. life. I've gotcha. Yeah. No, exceptional uh, stuff. Well, you've uh, made me very uncomfortable for segueing into this. But speaking of books and child actors, Percy Jackson. <laughs> thanks for that. <laughs> Thanks for that. You're you're very well. You're welcome. I don't think there's any horrendous traumas involved in this. No, although um, although it is steeped in the Greek god, so there's horrendous this is, traumas all around. This is it. Yes. Now you and I both used to sell the Percy Jackson books. I'm sort of familiar because I've taught a lot of kids who are mad fans of it. Uh, I've seen the film, but you've seen the Disney Plus TV show. So yeah, kinda, I... what's your kind of rundown having finished watching it like? Uh, well, I mean, I like to, to 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 kind of like give the 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 preamble on it. You know, it's 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 very much in that Harry Potter school of like YA fiction, where it's young child finds out their magical chosen one, go off to magic magic half world camp school mm. and go on big adventure. You know, it's it it like one of those, I, I, like one of them, one of them sorts. But I think Percy Jackson always stood out because. Is aside from you know, by all accounts, being very well written, Rick Riordan's a, a, mm. he's a very good author by all accounts. Um, I think people were really drawn to the fact that it is so steeped in Greek mythology and educated children, like educated kids without pre, like without talking down to them, pre- like talking down to them and making it feel like it's educational. Well, this is it because, like, I mean, now cards on the table. I only know it through osmosis. I, I'm reasonably confident because the teenagers I talk to have told me the plots and stuff. But like, even if you take a cursory glance at all the Rick Reardon books in a shop, you've got like Percy Jackson books. You've got spinoffs, which are just the trial of Apollo. You've got spinoffs, which are like, you know, Wrath of the Gods and all that kind of stuff. And not only does it sound genuinely epic, but for my cursory knowledge from studying theatre, it all seems very accurate. You know, it doesn't seem yeah, like, like it's taking shortcuts or make do no. the easy thing, you know? And so to, to kind of get into the series, then, um, I, like, to, to, from that kind of point, like, I, I've I, I, I've gotten to be a little bit of a buff on um, on, on Greek mythology lately. I mm. thoroughly enjoyed the Stephen, King, the Stephen Fry books. Um, and like, for a start, Greek mythology is not kid friendly. There is a lot of gross stuff that happens. I I'd make a case that it's not adult friendly either, frankly. No, but and the series it it, it managed to balance a fine line by obfuscating the more horrendous acts the gods commit, but not like 
shinying them up either. Like it's it's mm. not like they're it's not like Hercules where Zeus is a big friendly man and is not at all a sexual. Oh, assault. you're talking about the Disney one, like yeah, yeah, yeah right. Yeah. Uh, like they 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 still paint the Greek gods as complicated, messy figures, but just kind of soften down like the the harder edges. But like they're still complicated. They're still like antagonistic. Mm. Like they're still all powerful beings who just kind of roam around and screw with people. Um, kind of like the superheroes and the boys, where I suppose. Just yeah, the boys all, for kids. You know, powerful, like kind of very distant, like like the, weirdly I mean, the, messed like, up figures. Like the premise of the show is that Percy is a a half blood son of Poseidon who until really up until like he actually makes it like Percy actively makes a name for himself completely ignores him. Mm. and it's only because his life is in terrible peril that he steps in at all um, right, so, so if it wasn't kind of for a fluke like he would have lived his whole life not knowing like well, I mean, the way the show, the way the series is, the fact, like, the simple fact of Percy being, having God blood, the world was kind of out to kill him from the jump. Right. I'm basing uh, some of this on my experience of seeing the film, which I appreciate is in that, like, Darren Shan, Vampire's Assistant kind of bracket where they just threw out the source material and just did what they want with it. Like, you know. Yeah. Now, as I said, neither of us have read the books. I cannot speak to this movie mm. as like an adaptation of that work. But on its own, as an eight-part series, I think it does a very, very good job of having a, of, of of establishing its world and having a narrative through line. And I mean, it helps when you actually have because I think one of the big problems people had with the movie was that they kind of aged up the characters to be like you know. Where in the books they're like twelve and thirteen, the movie made them fifteen and sixteen, and then had people in their thirties playing them. Yeah, 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 yeah. Whereas so in this typical like Hollywood teenagers. Yeah, whereas in this they really skewed everything down, and the kids are actually twelve and thirteen, and there's like a fourteen, fifteen year old playing them. Um, right. So okay. like they they really they 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 made it they made a conceited effort to actually get very talented child actors like an eight episode series is a long time to spend with like a lead character who's 12 years old but they 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 nailed it uh he's, he's a very very charming child um and it's it, i think one thing that surprised me is that like you know in in that sort of like young ya fiction you kind of expect a few just deus ex machinas and Especially in a show that where gods are actively a part of the plot, everything make everything feels planted and paid off, and all the car, all of the, all of them overcoming obstacles, mm. always feel like a natural progression of like that character's skill. Um. So no, like it, it, if like if you're looking for something in that you know in that Harry Potter right, in that kind of action adventure, uh, fan like fantastical kind of uh adventure series i i really thoroughly recommend it i think my my only biggest complaint is that the lighting it's a bit weird from time to time and if they're in the a lighting really dark... the lighting or the lightning lighting lighting okay the lightning i, I, I would say some lightning thief like <laughs> lightning lightning's totally cool <laughs> okay. but no the light the lighting gets a bit weird from time to time and if they're in like a dark if they're on like a dark set it is almost impossible to see anything um, yeah, what is it with modern cinemat cinematography? Because like Han Solo a few years ago had that problem too, and so did Game of Thrones. Like you'd think in the era of like digital filters and stuff, like and with the cocaine bear as well as another one. Like, like surely someone looks at this before releasing it and goes, "Can you see it?" You know? I don't know. I think like it's. I mean, it could be so many, like a, a combination of so many different things. But I think as, you know, resolutions have kept scaling up, because I mean, you know, we, we've drifted away from the old Hollywood because everything was in like 260p resolution. Everything had to be big and bright and colorful so that it could even read on a low poly camera. Um, 
Whereas now, because definitions get better, I think a lot of people are just angling for more naturalistic lighting because, oh, of course it'll show up on your 4K screen of, except for when it's just dark. Right. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Like, I, 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 yeah, I can't say, but that's that's my read on it. Uh, okay. It just seems so, like, like, I get shortcuts are made when you, like, do more productions for the same amount of money and all that kind of stuff. But, like, uh, it's just, you would think with advances in technology, things would get better and not worse, you know? Especially on the big tent poly things. I don't even, I don't even think it's a shortcut. I don't think it's a budget issue. I think it was, a, I think it's a taste of choice that by the time they realized it, it was just too late. And, you know, just adding a bloom effect would just make it look so much worse, you know? Yeah, I suppose. Um, oh, and just like the one other thing to mention is that it's like the one thing that's such a shame about this series is like, because again, the casting was great. Like, especially, as I said, the kids are all excellent. Uh, the, the, the cast that they got for the actual gods, you know, big roles, big roles to fill in, like, you know, having to play these larger than life personas for the most part are all excellent and a, a, such a great choice was Lance Reddick as Zeus ooh yeah and it's such a shame that that's like that that has to be a one off uh, what a what a role to go out on though you, you say that Lance Reddick passed away what, I think a year ago and I feel like I've seen him in like five things since he died <laughs> Well, I mean, that's just the nature of it. But like, yeah, I mean, like that's th like on a scale of that to Orson Welles playing Unicron and selling wine out of a cardboard box. Zeus is a pretty good one to go out on. Which just actually to tie it back to the Justice to the Suicide Squad game, um, yeah, clips the ending of that game coming out, and because that's that's the last. The, like, Kevin Conroy managed to get some dialogue in for oh, no. Batman for that game. And by all accounts, it is unceremonious. <laughs> oh, no. Well, no, no, no. I mean, tell me, yeah. but no. I, I, have, I have it, like, I, I, I'm pretty sure it's that they just kind of, like, beat him to death in a chair. And that's how he ends his Batman career. That's how he ends by. So yeah, so there's yeah, there's worse notes to go out on. Um, oh, no. But yeah, no, like it's like it, as I said, it's such a shame. Like, because yeah, Lance Reddick just has such a powerful aura around him. Mm. Um, yeah, great piece of casting. That's yeah, that's that's a damn shame that uh, that we can't that 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 we're not getting any more of. Um, but yeah, no, really, I really would thoroughly recommend it. It's as as of today or yesterday, the whole series is out on Disney Plus. I like if if you have Disney, I'd say go watch it. It's it's a blast. Okay, it, f congratulations, Kev. We actually covered all our topics. Hot diggity damn! Some some meandering into the drama of former Nickelodeon child actors, but otherwise <laughs> fairly. On Fairly, I even got a little. I even got a little monkey man rant in at the start. Of course, I was a bit worried there, uh, <laughs> but uh, with the one minute we have left, assuming I timed it right, is there anything you'd like to plug or anything you'd like to say? Um, no, I don't think there's anything really kind of going on at the moment. Um, you can, as always, uh, main thing to plug is, in fact, Nerd to Know Media itself the brand. Uh, we've recently restructured our Patreon. I recently um, found out we have a Patreon. Can I plug it at the end of every episode with you? How? I'm tired. I can't believe you don't listen to me on our own podcast. I don't edit this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we've recently restructured our Patreon with some cool new tiers. You should go check that out uh, and everything else over on nerdtonomedia.com. You can find all of our socials and all of our other old shows on there as well uh, we don't plug them often but you know I had done an anime review show, Kian had done a gaming chat show they are genuinely very good shows uh, that 
we forgot to plug because they're three yeah. Years old. I do I do miss the game corner because to put it in some context, the whole conceit of it was that I phoned up someone either I knew or didn't know during the height of lockdown and just found out what games and board games they were playing and a little bit nerd, a little bit Fraser Crane, you know, all wholesome, you know. All wholesome, all podcast. <laughs> um, so yeah, so you can find all of that on Um mm-hmm. And unless you want to plug anything, I think that's us. No, 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 I'm all good. I apologize to Dara, who either has to add a minute on or take a minute away at the end of this. Uh, but we'll be back at the same time next week with all the inevitable news that will come out a minute and a half after we stop recording. Uh, so until then, I've been keen. You know, there yep. is literally a PlayStation showcase on as we're recording. So, yeah, there's, yeah. I wish I could swear. This is what we get for recording on a Wednesday. <laughs> I don't know whose idea it is. It's not mine. <laughs> I think it's Dara's and he's not here. Of course, typical. <laughs> all right. Until, ne- until next time. We'll until see you next only. time, a- avoid the Suicide Squad, apparently, unless you're making my game, in which case, get in touch. Uh, and until next time, bye bye. Bye bye. Alright, so you're listening to the podcast, you're like, hey, I'm not in Ireland, how do I get in touch? Well, TuneIn has you covered. That's how you can check us out live when we're on the radio. Um, you go to TuneIn and download the app, or you can check out the live streams on nerdtonomedia.com or phoenix92.5 FM. If you want to get in contact with us, it's very easy. Nerdtonomedia everywhere. Nerdtonomedia on Twitter. Nerdtonomedia Instagram. Nerdtonomedia on Twitch. Nerdtonomedia at gmail.com if you want to reach out via email. Hope to hear from you soon. Check out the Wrestling Rewind here on Phoenix 92.5 FM every Tuesday at 8pm to 9pm. And of course, over on NerdToKnowMedia.com, the only wrestling podcast by wrestling fans who don't hate wrestling. We'll see you then. Hey, Dara, what are you doing over there in Ireland? Like with the freaking leprechauns and everything. That's not cool. You should be over there with the God players. At least then you could, like, I don't know, pretend like you got, I don't know, some kind of thing going on. Yeah, with uh, you give me a Brooklyn Ray. Yeah, with you. Dick, Dara. Dara? Yeah, Dara. Why ain't you over here with Joey? Anyway, we miss you, dude. So, uh, this is Bill Caribo saying, we love it. I love it. All I do is... Thank you for listening to a Nerd to Know Media production. 